get to my CPA license. I won't say that having an MBA, uh, you know, almost 15 years later in the industry, has that paid off? Maybe, maybe not. Um, but it did allow me to get my 150 credits and allowed me to sit for the CPA exam, which was which was great. Um, as Ann mentioned, I think the CPA is is the critical pivotal point for public accounting. Uh, and there's other uh, certificates that are, uh, I won't say equally, but very important. Um, such depending on your your study of choice. Um, there's a lot of accounting, uh, IT, internal audit type certifications that you can chase, uh, which are very helpful. So good question. Excellent. And why do you, first of all, let me see, is Ian Y here before I go to the next question? Oh, hi, how are you? This is Carolina. Hey. I'm hi, Carolina. I am a senior in transaction tax. I also Excellent. graduated from Mason. Very and good. I do have a graduate degree, but it's not in accounting. So I honestly don't think it's <laughs> necessary. I mean, a graduate degree might not be necessary in accounting, mm -hmm. but it's, I think it's like everybody said, it's more important the CPA and get all the credits for it. And there are different ways to get it. Hi, and I'm John Paterno. I also work at EY. Uh, I'm a senior in the financial accounting advisory services. Um, I also have a graduate degree, but it's not in accounting, but it helped me get to 150 credits. But um, I will also say it's very helpful probably to focus on the CPA more. Um, I did see one person put in the chat, how do you get to 150 credits without a graduate degree? Mm -hmm. um, as long as you meet the standards of your accounting board, um, that other 150 credits can be in whatever it is. Like I had an, uh, another senior who finished 150 credits at Nova and took some other random classes just to get to 150 just so they can meet the Virginia Board of Accounting. Um, so it helps if you want to get into more in-depth topics in accounting, but I don't think it's always a requirement. Excellent, thank you. And why do you all think students typically select a, a career field in accounting? What are your all thoughts on that? And we'll go to the same order, BDO, okay. Kearney, Clifton, and EMI. Very good, so um, why accounting? Why do people want a career in accounting? Um, Why do you think students select that? Yeah. Why do I think students? Uh, because they love numbers. Um, <laughs> that, that could be one reason. That's why I chose to go into it um, was because I was good at math and that's what my um, uncle did. So some people might choose it because it's kind of from a family perspective. Other people might have known somebody about it. One thing that I was talking to one of my clients, he goes, you know, no matter if it's good times or bad times, we still have to close the books. So you always need an accountant and good times and bad times. And so job security is, is very much key by choosing accounting. Excellent, yeah. And? Um, I, I agree with Michelle. I think for me, it was a lot about job security. Um, I think accounting is a pretty high paying job. Um, we work hard, we certainly earn it, but um, it's, it's a high paying job among the, the jobs that you can get straight out of college. So I think that's probably part of it as well. Yeah, and, and I'll echo, uh, especially what Michelle said with the stability of in the accounting profession. I think that was the main driver behind myself pursuing a degree in accounting, uh, exactly what Michelle stated. You know, and, and I'll mention too, um, when I went into the accounting field, I kind of had the same assumption that it's all about the numbers. And I, I learned that it's really not. Uh, there's, I would say it's probably 85% people yeah. skills almost, um, and, and maybe 15% numbers. Uh, and thankfully the 15% you need, you have technology to do the math for you uh, because I, I can't even do simple math in my head anymore. I rely on a calculator so much and my, my kids often correct that. Um, but, but yeah, I think the stability is the driving force behind accounting. Excellent. I also agree with everybody that um, definitely accounting is recession proof. And then mm -hmm. the reason why I study accounting is because I'm, I really like math. I think a lot of us do. And also because I was very interested in tax and, and I felt like that was gonna give me a good background and to like moving forward in that area. Yeah, I agree. Um, I was doing uh, internal accounting for a, a small company for a while before I went public. And um, I just think accounting is just interesting. Um, they usually say accounting is the language of business and you really see how everything ties together. 
um, from the accounting department. Excellent. So my next question gets back to a little bit, Michelle talked, she touched on it a little bit. How important are internships, study abroad opportunities associated with your career in accounting? And we'll go ahead and start, Michelle, you can start that out. Okay, so I did a study abroad experience in Spain. I had decided that I wanted to double major in accounting in Spanish, wanted to travel, and that turned out well. Now I will say, if studying abroad, studying a foreign language, leaving your country, leaving your family is not something you wanna do, find something that you are passionate about to differentiate mm -hmm. yourself. It doesn't Very have good. to be that study abroad or the internship, but it needs to be something that you're passionate about and do it. So by doing that internship or doing the study abroad, you're gonna be able to talk about that in your interviews and set yourself apart. You need to make yourself somehow unique and memorable in a good way. And I, I agree. I think, I'm not sure how closely we look at study abroad, although I studied abroad as well, and it was a really phenomenal life experience. Um, so I, I wouldn't, I couldn't recommend it more. But um, in terms of applying for a job, I think an internship's a really good thing. Um, but I think, you know, any, any study job that you can demonstrate that you're getting, you know, good business experience and working throughout school is a good thing. Um, that's what I did. I actually took a bookkeeping job. Um, and, and worked at my, my senior year and my junior year to demonstrate that, you know, I was an employee that would be loyal and that I was learning, you know, sort of some basic parts of what our industry does. So I think it doesn't have to be an internship. It could be a job um, or, you know, taking a leadership role in an organization at Mason, um, participating in the Mason Mines, is it Mines? Mason Mines. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. Mentorship program would be great. Yeah. Anything you can do to demonstrate your commitment to the field, um, and that you're committed to the community. Yeah, great, great comments, and you know, and and I'll say, the the internship study abroad. I do agree. I mean, yeah, if you could get four years of internships and put that on your resume, hey, that would look great, wouldn't it? But at the <laughs> same time, it's extremely challenging to get those internships sometimes. And, and so I'll say the. The, the crux, I think, is time management, right? And, and when you're in the accounting profession, time management is critical. And what you need to try to do is demonstrate to your potential employers that you have good time management skills. Mm -hmm. So if you're working, you know, 30 hours a week and you're carrying a 12 to 15 credit load, you know, show that to your potential employers because that shows that you have the ability to manage your time appropriately. Um, and I think that is going to set you apart um, most definitely. I had internships and I was also very fortunate to like study abroad and I believe, um, I don't think it's a requirement like for you to be able to work in public accounting, but it helps a lot in the sense that you learn a lot of soft skills that helped me a lot to like develop my reasoning and then being able to like communicate better, learn how to send simple emails and then be able to gather information. I think it's, it's just something that sometimes you think that is very basic, but if you don't have those minimum, uh, I guess, no requirements, but I feel like it helps you, it helped me very much, like when I started at EY. I agree. Um, I wouldn't say like study abroad internships are requirements, but they help show your growth and development, your ability to manage uh, multiple workloads and do multiple things at the same time. Um, and to interact with people above you and below you. Um, and I think doing something like volunteering or like a leadership role, showing that you have like um, some good soft skills built up along with your, your background and your grades, I think that also helps as well. You know, you all answered it really well because you all kind of led into my next question. We're talking about some of the critical skills that are important for students pursuing the field of accounting to have. And I think several have already been mentioned, time management skills and people skills. What other skills do you feel are important for students pursuing the area of accounting to have? So uh, I'll start again, I guess. Um, so Michelle with BDO. Um, the 
the pieces that I see that set people apart and, and kind of make or break it is that critical thinking. So, you know, we take those classes, read this English piece of um, book and, and give us your critical thoughts on it. That critical thinking will follow throughout and you need that because as an auditor, so I do audit, that's what I kind of was raised in. You have to have that professional skepticism. You can't trust that those numbers are okay. You need to go and get proof and evidence. So I grew up in the Midwest um, and I grew up in Missouri. I'm not sure how many people know what the, the tagline is for that state. Does anybody know that one? No? Show me. Got it. Perfect. So what I would do with clients, they would like complain, oh, the auditor's coming in. Oh, we have to do this. And I was like, hey, I'm from Missouri. You got to just show me. Show me your documentation. <laughs> And, and that's the piece that I think is going to take you farther, especially in the public accounting world, you, where you're, you're trying to pull things out of people. That, you know, people do not want to have an audit. I mean, plain and simple, that's not an exciting thing to have. People don't want to do their taxes. There's those types of things. And if you're going in, it's kind of a grudge purchase, right? I'm paying you to do something that I really don't even want to do. So you need to have that personality, those, those soft skills that communication is going to be really key. I can't tell you in my current job at BDO, I serve as the international liaison partner between multiple countries um, because I speak now German, having followed my boyfriend, now husband, over to Germany um, while he got his duty station assigned over there. I have to work back and forth between different countries, different cultures, and language barriers. So being able to really understand those nuances and have strong communication skills is key. And even within the United States, you talk to different people from New York, they have these funny accents and then the South and you speak at a different rate, just making sure that you can communicate. What do you mean when you say certain words in that follow up? So I think communication is important, critical thinking and that relationship. Excellent. Ian? I think um, to add on to what Michelle said, I think an another thing that we look for is writing skills. Um, I, I really thought that if I became an accountant out of school, I would just work with numbers and I would live in Excel and I would just be happy all the time. Um, and it turns out that I mostly write all the time. <laughs> so I think writing skills are really important. Um, I know Mason has really, really good writing classes. You should capitalize on them um, because you're going to have a lot of writing ahead of you. Yeah, and I'll add, um, you know, I think that organizational and project management skills are, are really critical. And I find that, you know, the majority of our, you know, one, two, three year uh, personnel, they tend to just get buried uh, because they don't have that organizational skill to be able to understand what's, uh, what's critical today and maybe not critical until tomorrow. Um, and so being able to have a project management skill is really helpful. And I know that there are classes at Mason or, or online type tools, even YouTube that you could uh, research to, to really build that strength of project management. For me, I think uh, communication skills and being able to prioritize your work is very important because you need to determine what is like due now and then what can wait. And also, I think active listening is uh, it's really good, especially whenever you're trying to take notes and things like that. Writing, like Anne mentioned, um, I think is really good because I honestly have to write memos all the time. And, and yeah, like it helps. Yeah, I agree. Um, especially like you give like position papers or a white paper, you have to be able to communicate effectively to clients or to your mm -hmm. higher ups why you determined something is was the way it was or the conclusions you drew off of your sample testing. Um, another one is I would say like being the ability, the ability to adapt to new teams quickly because um, depends when you start. Like if you start in the middle of the winter, you could be thrown into busy season right away. So you need to learn to pick up the pace, learn what's going on on your engagements, mm -hmm. learn how your teammates interact, what they're looking for. Um, and being able to give upward and downward feedback, I think is a big one too. Um, you'll get a lot of feedback in your first year, but being also to be able to like communicate upward about how you think your teammates are doing or people above you, I think is also um, another skill to kind of uh, work on as well. Excellent. 
So I guess I want to transition into another uh, question in regards to this year has really been an unprecedented year, clearly. And I guess I would ask you all, and I'm sure students are wanting to know, those are kind of anxious of getting into the job market. How has COVID-19 kind of impacted your hiring needs and your recruiting strategy for this fall? Okay, so as far as our, our strategy and our approach, we're doing it obviously virtually for we go through and ask questions and then people can submit information. We can listen to those and then those recordings of answers and then we can do things. What you'll notice is that there's a shorter time frame between when you start the process and you get to an offer stage just because mm -hmm. we can do it more quickly. And I think that that's a huge benefit for the people who are in that process of looking for the internships or looking for the jobs um, for the full time. And yes, we are still hiring. Um, we have not stopped hiring. They're, the good thing about um, the public accounting world is that we're constantly putting people through um, because everybody knows that the people who start in public accounting aren't always going to stay in public accounting until they, they retire. That's just not what they desire. That's not what they want. And so we might as well just be open and honest about that and say, you know, I just want to stay for two years. I want to get my two years experience and call it a day. I want to get to be a senior so that I can learn how to manage and, and be an in charge on engagements, or I want to learn how to manage. So I want to be the manager role. So different people have different levels that they want to get to, but at all times we're, we're feeding into that bottom of the pyramid, if you will. Um, and what's neat is when those people leave public accounting, they go to either clients or potential clients. So you always want to have that, that good relationship with people as whether you're the one that's leaving or you're the one that's, you know, staying. So, yeah. Um, so from the Carney perspective, um, our hiring really has not changed. Um, we're still planning to participate in the career fair virtually, um, which is going to be exciting and different for us. Um, and we're still going to be sourcing our candidates through Handshake and through the career fair. Um, we'll do, I guess, virtual on-campus interviews this year, um, right after the career fair. Um, and then Carney does a series of open houses um, to, to make final selections. So if, if you were to come and have an on-campus interview with us or on-campus interview with us, um, then we do a virtual open house um, where you'd meet some people other than me, get, a, get to feel for other people that work for the firm, um, and then final selections would be made. Um, we, we still have the same counts that we're looking for. Um, Caleb, I can't remember. I wanna say last year, last fall from Mason, we probably hired between 10 and 15. Um, Folks, um, and we, we also bring on interns um, from the fall career fair that will start the following summer. Um, we still did a full internship this summer. Um, we brought on all of our Mason interns for a full internship, albeit virtual, um, which was an exciting and different experience for us, but um, we're rolling with it. So um, for us, the hiring really hasn't changed. Excellent. Yeah, and, and I would say for us, you know, for our, our firm, the hiring uh, certainly slowed down uh, for those first few months post-COVID, um, but that has now started to, I'll say, reopen up um, for the for the items mentioned already. You know, the, the work has not really ceased. Uh, people still have to be audited, um, and so that, that helps give us that job security uh, inside this profession. Um, just like the others have said, uh, you know, we'll be participating in virtual interviews, virtual uh, on-campus interviews, um, and so we're, we're certainly looking forward to, to the new uh, method. Great. Um, yeah, as far as EOI is concerned, um, we had virtual interns this summer, um, and we also will be taking on our normal recruiting uh, goals, I think, for this year as well. Um, I do know for today and tomorrow, I think on Handshake, um, the positions for assurance, tax, and consulting staff and interns will be open until next week. Um, and I think I saw something in the chat. Yes, internships are paid, and I think they're about six to eight weeks, depending on which service line you're with. Oh, and the, the deadline for application is 916, by the way. Very good. Well, I want to definitely thank you all uh, for being available here. I know that there's some questions in the chat, but I think students will have the opportunity 
uh, with a couple of you all to go uh, into a further chat session, I think at 530, and ask additional questions. And um, we will definitely make sure that the students get their questions answered at some point. But I think that this has been very successful in regards to kind of getting some information out there to our students. And so I guess the students in a few minutes will be switching over to go to the next session. Um, but let me see here, let me look in the chat real quick as the students are kind of making their transition. Um, okay, this is a good one real quickly. Do many firms use application sorting algorithms, I guess you can call it the ATS system, you know, the applicant tracking system in order to uh, interview their candidates? Ours does not. Yeah, ours, ours does not that I'm aware of. I know that there are some out there that are using that algorithm, but um, we kind of, we look at the actual the application, kind of the whole person, if you will, um, because things can get missed, um, quite frankly, from a computer standpoint, you would think not, but that piece has not been replaced by the computers. Right, absolutely. Well, very good. Well, thank you all so much for being a part of this today. And those of you all that are going to be going to the 530 session for students to log in further, I think you should have that information. Um, and if you don't, just let, you know, let Caleb know and he will definitely get that information to you. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Good luck. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Have a good one. I'm already like used to.